I documented everything I spent in a week in Costa Rica to show you guys what the real cost of living is like in Costa Rica, specifically Manuel Antonio, so you know what to expect on your trip. This video is perfect for anyone who is planning to travel to Costa Rica, but maybe on a budget or are just curious about what the cost of living could be like in Manuel Antonio, Costa Rica, but this could really apply to many of the major touristy cities in Costa Rica. The first time I made this type of video was when I was in Puerto Escondido, Mexico, and you guys loved it. And I I personally love watching these types of videos as well. So I definitely wanted to do one in Costa Rica because personally I was very curious what the cost of living is there since it is known as being one of the more expensive countries in Latin America. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video where I will be giving all of my top budget friendly tips for Costa Rica specifically. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's jump into this week's video. Now let's start with the biggest expense for pretty much everyone in Costa Rica and that is accommodation. Just to preface, this was a big work week for me. I am a full-time digital nomad if we are just meeting for the first time and this week in Manuel Antonio was a total work week so Dylan and I were grinding day in and day out at this Selena. We left a few times here and there to go to the beach, go to some restaurants, but for the most part we didn't do really any major activities or tours that took up a big part of our budget so just keep that in mind. But as a digital nomad and if you're a digital nomad you'll know this yourself not every week is a crazy fun travel week a lot and most of the days really are spent working on our computers and making sure that we are making that online income that makes this lifestyle possible when I was in Manuel Antonio I stayed at a Selena hostel there if you've never heard of Selena they are a big hostel chain all throughout Latin America parts of Europe and North America they are really geared towards backpackers and digital nomads but this particular Selena ended up taking up almost three-fourths of my entire budget for the week by the way if I keep looking at my computer it's because I have it right here. And this is for two people, by the way. This whole video is for two. We spent $1,151.92 for seven nights at a Selena. This is way more than I usually spend on housing. When I travel solo, which is most of the time, I am staying in dorms at hostels. But Dylan and I kind of wanted to treat ourselves because the other two weeks of our travel, we had accommodation covered by various jobs that we were doing. We kind of wanted to treat ourselves at a Selena, and they also had a co-working space, which we didn't know we had to pay extra for. Cover that in my review I was not happy about that but yes at the Selena we stayed in a private standard room it included our own bathroom a private balcony and daily cleaning and then other amenities at this Selena included free Wi-Fi a rooftop deck a restaurant and bar a shared kitchen and overall the Selena really felt like a resort so the price sort of was justified but I still definitely felt like it was a little too much but again Costa Rica is just typically more expensive than a lot of other places in Latin America oh I forgot to mention that also did include free breakfast every morning. Like I mentioned earlier, the $1,150 we spent on our room, we thought that was going to include a co-working space, which given that price tag, it should in my opinion. But in order to use the actual co-working space, you had to pay $12 a day extra or $50 for the week. We didn't end up doing this and didn't really end up feeling like it was 100% necessary. So that total of $1,152 ended up coming out to $576.46 a person for seven days of housing. So that's how much we spent on accommodation, but just to give you a general idea of some other places, I was doing a little bit of research on other hostels and Airbnbs in Manuel Antonio. High season versus low season is something we're gonna discuss later in the video, but that will drastically impact the price of everything. So for a dorm, you can expect to spend anywhere from $18 to $30 a night in a dorm, anywhere from $60 to $100 a night in a private room at a dorm, and then anywhere, it's a big range, but like $30 to $130 a night in an Airbnb. And again, this will also depend on how many people are with you, where it is and what time of year it is. So those are just some general costs. All right, so let's jump into our second largest expense in Manuel Antonio, and that is food. A few things to note right off the bat. We did have breakfast included, like I mentioned earlier, with our private standard room at the Selena. Additionally, the Selena also had a restaurant and bar on site, so that was really convenient for when we were working there all day and we wanted to grab lunch really quickly. We did that probably half the time we were there, so that was really great and convenient. And then lastly, if you are on a stricter budget, Capos, which is the town right next to Manuel Antonio, and that's actually where the entrance to Manuel Antonio now National Park is. If you're on a tight budget, that is the place to go for cheaper food options, both grocery stores and restaurants. We actually went there on Saturday to the farmer's market. Highly recommend doing that. It was a really cool, immersive local experience. So we took the bus here from Manuel Antonio. It was probably a 10 minute ride. And we went there to pick up some fresh local produce, fruits, veggies, random other goods. And the total here that we spent was 7,200 colonists, which was about $11 total US. We also picked up a loaf of 
of bread at a local bakery for about 3,300 colonists, which came out to $5. And then some other random essentials at a grocery store for about 4,000 colonists, which is about $6. So the total of that entire grocery run for the week was about 22 USD. I went to a couple of like the smaller local grocery stores in Manuel Antonio. The prices are significantly higher there than they are in Capos. So highly recommend going there. It's really easy to get there by bus. We're gonna discuss transportation in the next section, but that's my main budget saving tip. And then in terms of eating out, like I mentioned earlier, we ate a lot of our meals at the Salina, but we also took dinner as a fun time to explore Manuel Antonio, watch the sunset. We ate at a few of the different restaurants right by the Salina, including El Avion, El Wagon, and La Lampeta, which all were really, really nice and had beautiful views of the ocean and the sunset every night. Prices here usually ranged from about 10,000 to 30,000 colones, which is about 15 to 45 dollars for two people. And this completely varied depending on whether or not we got appetizers or drinks or anything like that, of course. So for example, one night, and this was our most expensive night out, we spent 37,000 colones, which was about $56 at El Avion because we were with KJ and Sarah and having a really fun night. We all got appetizers and drinks and entrees and just enjoyed the sunset. So that was kind of our like balling out night. And honestly, for two people, 56 bucks on that, I personally thought that was a decent deal, especially in a touristy area like Manuel Antonio. But another night in Manuel Antonio, we spent about 6,500 colones, which is a little under 10 bucks on some pizza from El Wagon. So that was just way cheaper. And it just shows how drastically the overall budget it can vary based on your personal preferences and how much you want to spend. So the total amount that we spent on food for the week that we were in Manuel Antonio was 219,140 colones, which comes out to $331.31 for two people, which comes out to about $165.50 per person for the week on food. The next major thing you're probably going to spend a lot of money on is transportation. Like I mentioned earlier, this was a very intense work week for us, so we didn't leave the Salina too much, and when we did, we could walk to the beaches and the restaurants around the Salina, but we did take a shared shuttle from the San Juan Airport from there all the way to the Salina. It was about a four hour ride, depending on traffic, and per person, it was 60 US dollars. And then in terms of getting around Manuel Antonio, the bus is what I would recommend that you do, especially if you're on a budget. They run all day every day between Manuel Antonio and Capos starting at 5 45 a.m. It's a flat fee of 320 colonists per person no matter how far you're going. So if you're going two stops it's 320. If you're going all the way to the national park it's still 320 colonists. So make sure you have coins on you. It's just a lot easier when you get on the bus to hand to the bus driver. It's super super convenient and easy and very budget friendly. 320 colonists is like 50 cents I think somewhere in that range. We only took the bus twice when we were there and so that ended up being 1280 colonists which is less than two dollars us so in total in a week in manuel antonio we spent 80,652 colonists which comes out to about 122 us dollars for the week before i jump into the next section i do want to touch on gas really quickly because i know a lot of people may be running a car while they're in costa rica you get a rental car the second week in costa rica and there are two main things i want to touch on the first thing that we noticed right off the bat is there are a lot of tolls especially if you're driving along the pacific coast i think we stopped at about like five on our way from San Juan to Hako. So make sure you have a lot of change on you or at least some smaller bills that you can get change from at the tolls themselves. And they'll charge anywhere from like 300 colonists to 1,000 colonists. I think they do take card, but it's just a lot easier if you can just give them, you know, the cash right there. And then secondly was gas prices. So when we were there, it was really expensive. We were there in April of 2022. If you're anywhere in the world, pretty much, gas prices are absurd right now. And that did not exclude Costa Rica. We filled up our tank on the way to Hako and I think we did about 44 liters and for that we spent 38,778 colones which comes out to about 58 US dollars. So it ended up being about five dollars a gallon when we were there. <music> Usually in these videos, I have a section for luxuries or activities, but since we really were just working all week, I don't really have anything in there besides an $8 pair of sunglasses that I bought, but I am going to add a work section into this video because there were a few things, including SIM cards and stuff like that, that we spent our money on here in Costa Rica. Since the co-working space ended up being extra at the Salina, we did not spend our money on that, but if we did, it would have been an extra $50 on top of everything else. So really the only thing that we ended up spending money on in regards to work on this trip was our Google 
Google Fi SIM card bill. If you've never heard of Google Fi, I was with you until the last few months when I started using it and I am so far pretty obsessed. It's about the closest thing that you can get to an international SIM card, which for digital nomads like me and like many of you watching, it is so convenient to not have to stop by a Claro or a Tigo or whatever SIM card is in your area and get a new one in every country and then have to deal with filling it up and making sure that you didn't run out of data, all that annoying stuff. So Google Fi is what I've been using for the last few months and it worked amazing in Costa Rica, especially in Manuel Antonio. In April of 2022, it was $60 per person for the month for 22 gigs plus tethering, which is great. I love to have the option to use my phone as a hotspot in wherever country I am. So for one week with the Google Fi SIM card, it comes out to $30 total on our plan. So that's about $15 a person for the week. Side note, I do plan to make a full Google Fi review at the end of this year after I've traveled to a bunch of more countries. I really want to be able to test it out in different places and make sure that the strength is what they say it is. So stay tuned for that video coming end of 2022. So the grand total of what we spent in seven days in Manuel Antonio, Costa Rica comes out to 1,081,749 colones, which comes out to $1,635.46. So that is $817.73 per person for seven days total. This comes out to about $117 a day per person. Personally, that felt very expensive to me. I am not used to spending that much, but I went, did a little research on Nomadic Mat and a few other kind of budget traveler websites. And that was kind of the estimated amount in Costa Rica to spend for like a mid tier budget. But with all that being said, like I've mentioned throughout the video, there is a lot of room to go way higher or way lower depending on your budget. With that being said, let's dive into my top money saving tips in Manuel Antonio, but really Costa Rica in general. Budget tip number one is to travel during the off season. Off season in Costa Rica typically correlates to the rainy season, which is usually May through November with October being the rainiest of all. So prices during this time of year are much, much lower than they would be in the peak season of December through March or April. But just because it's considered the off season does not mean it's any less amazing. I've actually heard that the Caribbean side of Costa Rica during that off season, rainy season is amazing. So do your research and kind of see where the best place to go are in the rainy season but with the rainforest and the jungles it's kind of a vibe to have the rain happening all the time it's very costa rican jungle feels so don't totally knock it until you try it budget tip number two is to stay at locally owned hostels and airbnbs over something chainy like a selena and if you are on a even more tight budget, stay in a shared dorm at a hostel. Tip number three is to take the public bus everywhere you go between Manuel Antonio and Capos or from Manuel Antonio to another city in Costa Rica. It may take a little bit longer than a shuttle may or a taxi, but they will be a lot cheaper in the long run. And there are tons of those buses running every single day. So just check the schedule online. Tip number four is to avoid tours. While they do have perks of like seeing wildlife that you probably wouldn't have spotted on your own, you can still have have an amazing time at Manuel Antonio National Park or some of the surrounding areas, hiking and exploring on your own and you'll save yourself like 60 to 100 bucks. Tip number five is to get your groceries and eat out in Capos. Like I mentioned earlier, prices there are a lot lower because it's a much more local area. If you're on an even tighter budget, seek out some sodas. If you've never heard of a soda, they are all throughout Costa Rica and they're basically locally owned open aired restaurants that have traditional Costa Rican food being served every single day for a very low price price. It's a really fun experience. I honestly highly recommend it even if you're not on a strict budget just because it feels very authentic and local and get the Plato del Dia for the best deal. And number six and my final tip is to take advantage of happy hour. We love happy hour all over the world but in Costa Rica they love their two for one deals. They have these deals on restaurants and bars all down the beach. They even had it at Selena every single day. You can get drinks for a lot cheaper and sometimes they'll include food in those deals too. So from like three to six, keep your eye out for those happy hour deals. If you want a full breakdown of every single thing that I spent my money on in Manuel Antonio, go check out the link in the description box. I have my Excel spreadsheet that I tracked everything on. Check out that link so you can see every specific thing I spent each day. And I hope this was really helpful if you're going to Costa Rica and you're on a budget or you just wanted to see what the cost of living is like. If you enjoy seeing these types of videos of everything I spend in a week, make sure to like this video and comment down below that you wanna see more of it so I know that. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more digital nomad experience.
experiences and adventures from all over the world. My next few destinations are in Spain. I'm going on a three week backpacking trip with my sister and then I'm going to Portugal, which is a huge digital nomad haven. So I am pumped to kind of see how that goes. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to see those videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.